Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we will be making this little pot of gold with the rainbow spilling out and over it and then I will also show you what I did to make this little one as well. I'm using mine as an accessory for this leprechaun which will be coming soon um, but this could easily be a little keychain or a um, little car hanger or just a little accessory for St. Patrick's Day. For this video, I am using a number four medium weight yarn and a 4.25 millimeter hook. This is a crochet along, so I will be doing every stitch with you. And I am also providing a drop down at the top of the screen with the pattern instructions for the first 30 seconds of every row for you to follow along with. And don't forget, if you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button and click that bell. Not only does that help me out, but you will also be notified every time I load a new video, as well as any likes, shares, and comments are always appreciated. Um, I think that's everything, so grab your yarn and let's get started. You can begin any way you prefer, as long as you have the same amount of stitches in row one. I will be doing a knot with the loop on the end as if I was going to be making a chain. And I'll insert my hook, grab my yarn, chain one. And remember that does not count as a stitch, that just attaches your yarn to your hook and for row one we are going to put six single crochets into the loop. One, two, three, four, five, Grab a stitch marker if you're using one and for row two we're going to do six increases so that's two single crochets in every stitch all the way around for a total of 12. So increase one and two increase three and four increase five and six increase seven and eight increase nine and ten and our last increase eleven and twelve row three we are going to do one single crochet one increase repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. so one single crochet one increase for two and three and then just repeat around so that same pattern four increase five and six seven, increase, eight and nine, ten, increase, eleven and twelve, thirteen, increase, fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, and our last increase, 17 and 18. Row four, we are going to do two single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 24. One, 
two and an increase three and four repeat five six increase seven and eight nine ten increase eleven and twelve thirteen fourteen increase fifteen and sixteen <clears throat> seventeen eighteen increase nineteen and twenty twenty one twenty two and our last increase, 23 and 24. Row five, we are going to be going in the front loops. So instead of going underneath and going under both sides of that V of your stitch, you're going to go under and you're just going to come up whoops, through the middle of the V. And then you're going to leave these stitches on the back side for the next row. So for row five, 24 single crochets in the front loop only. So you're going to dig down and go under and up through the V. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now if you just want to check, this is going to be make, make a little bottom for your pot. And here is the stitches that you'll be going in the back loop for the next row to start building your pot um, around. So that was ten. So keep going. Front loop only. Eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, and our last one, 24. Now I'm going to join into the next stitch just to make that a little smoother. Chain one, and then I'm going to flip so I can get into those back stitches of the, the back loop. I'm just going to stick that in there for a half second. For row six, you're going to do 24 single crochets in this back loop of the previous row. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 
and 24. And you may have to dig for that last stitch. It all depends on how you started the beginning of your row. Row seven, we are gonna do three single crochets, one increase, repeat that all the way around for a total of 30. And when you go to start your next row, remember you did that chain one there. So you wanna make sure you go up into that next stitch so you're behind your first single crochet. So one, two, three, and an increase, four and five. Repeat that, six, seven, eight, and an increase, nine and 10. 11, 12, 13, and an increase, 14 and 15, 16, 17, 18, and an increase, 19 and 20, 21, 22, 23, and an increase, 24 and 25, 26, 27, 28, and an increase, 29 and 30. Row eight, we are just gonna do 30 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Row nine, we are just gonna do 30 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Row 10, we're just gonna do 30 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, 29, 30. Row 11, we are gonna do three single crochets, one decrease, repeat that all the way around for a total of 24. So one, two, three, and a decrease. For four and just repeat that around five six seven and a decrease for eight nine ten eleven and a decrease for twelve thirteen 14, 15, and a decrease for 16, 17, 18, 19, and a decrease for 20, 21, 22, 23, and a decrease for 24. Row 12, we are going to be going in the front loops only again. So if you remember, instead of going down through both sides of that V, you're just going to go under and up and come through um, the middle of that V. So for row 12, we're going to do 24 single crochets in the front loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then I'm going to join into the next stitch and slip stitch and tie that off, leaving a little bit of a string. Um, you don't really need to weave it in if you don't want to. I just poked it in the other side, but I double um, I don't know, knotted it, I guess, just because I'm not tying it or anything. And after we get um, our next color on and finish the top, then we'll put this on the inside. All right, so grab your next color. 
So for me, this is the color that I'm choosing for the, the gold coins. And you will have to um, tie a knot with the loop on the end on this one. So just like you're making a chain because we'll be attaching this color. And it's going to feel a little bit awkward if you've never done this before. So what I like to do is I like to fold my front loop row down that we just finished so I can see all these back loops that we left. And I'm just going to pick a stitch right close to where I ended. Grab my little loop I made. We're going to pull that up and through and chain one. Now I'm not counting this as a stitch. I'm still going to do my first single crochet in that first loop. So now in the back loops for row 13, 24 single crochets. So in that same stitch where we attached one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Row 14, we will be doing two single crochets, one invisible decrease. Repeat that all the way around for a total of 18. So one, two, and an invisible decrease. And for an invisible decrease, you're gonna go in the front loop of the next stitch, the front loop of the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull through, grab your yarn again, and pull through the last loops on the hook. Now you're gonna do your two single crochets again. So this will be four, five, and your invisible decrease. Four, six, seven, eight, invisible decrease, or nine, ten, eleven, invisible decrease, or twelve, thirteen. 14, invisible decrease, for 15, 16, 17, and an invisible decrease, for 18. Row 15, we are going to do one single crochet one invisible decrease, repeat that all the way around for a total of 12. So one, invisible decrease for two, three, invisible decrease for four, oops, five, invisible decrease for six, Seven, invisible decrease for eight, 
9, invisible decrease for 10, 11, and the invisible decrease for 12. Now let's put some stuffing inside. And don't worry if this looks messy. It almost benefits to look the messier because it looks like little bumpy coins. All right, so just put your stuffing down in. You want it to be a bit on the firmer side so you can kind of push out the sides of your pot a bit. So I just stick it in and then Squish my fingers out to the sides. Hmm. There we go. And you want to have the, the gold part kind of raising up a bit as you're doing it. And like I said, don't feel bad about stretching it because the messier, the better, I think anyways. All right, I think that'll be about enough. Just kind of check that your pot isn't lopsided on the sides. And if you're happy with it, we will move on to the next row. So let's grab our hook and get that back in there. And for row 16, we are just going to do six invisible decreases. So that's one. Another invisible decrease. That's two. Another invisible decrease. That's three. Another invisible decrease. That's four. Another invisible decrease. That's five. And our last invisible decrease for six. And then we're just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. And tie that off and leave yourself a little bit of a tail. Um, if you want to make this into a um, hook for later, give yourself quite a bit of a tail. Maybe I'll do that too, just so I can show you. Get rid of my stitch marker. Grab your darning needle. Let's get rid of this first so it's out of our way. So I'm just going to go down into the next stitch over here and then kind of just weave that down and out the bottom. If you want, you can tie it. I'm just going to leave mine, but when you do, um, whatever you do at this end, make sure you're not pulling tight up here because you want that to stay nice and even across. So I'm going to cut mine. And then let's thread on our last string here. Now to close this up, you're just going to weave in and out of the top loops of your last row. And then you're going to pull that in. Try and get that knot or you tie it off on the inside if you can. But again, for this project, it's not going to matter too much because it kind of makes it look like bumpy gold pieces. Then I'm just going to grab a stitch right close and I'm going to tie a knot.
And now if you want to make this a tie, I would suggest not tying it right now. What I would do is go down into the center, out the bottom. Keep this loose once you pull your knot in because you want that to be raised. And then just do a little tiny tie that you can maybe hide under one of these round stitches. And then that way when it's hanging, it's not going to be pulling on the top of your gold piece. So I'll show you here. So get that back inside and then come up to the center of the top. And then now when it's hanging, all the pressure is coming down from down here and it's not pulling right here like this. Now, if you do put a keychain on, you will have that as a bit of a problem, but I mean, it's not heavy, so. All right, so I'm just gonna tie mine on a loop here. You could make some chains here if you want. This is where I get into trouble with my knots. You want that knot to be nice and close to the bottom. And then thread this back out. Make sure you go down in the same, same place you came up. And then we'll cut that. All right, so let's add our little rainbows now. Okay, now I just happen to have enough colors in my little scrap cut off pile sitting beside me. Um, you're gonna wanna have pieces around if you want long ones, I would start with 20 inches. You can always cut them lower if you want to. You're going to want a pink, a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, a blue, and a purple. Uh, mine are about 17 inches, but that's just because I didn't feel like going and cutting more. So we're going to start with our pink and remember when you do do these they're going to be folded in half so if you did choose 20 inches they're only going to be 10 inches of hanging string so what i do is i find my back so that's where i made my knot if you can't tell and you did a really good job joining there look for this little divot here where you chained one on the bottom and you don't have to be exact, but right around the front there. I'm just gonna go over a couple. You're gonna go down and around between the yellow and the brown. Make sure your ends are even on the bottom. You're gonna pull that through, making a loop on this side. Then you're gonna grab your strings and pull them through that loop. And then just pull that tight. And then you're just going to do that for all the rest of the colors. Whoop. I should have practiced this in the camera so I could be faster at it, but. I'm just lining my ends up.
I guess if you wanted, there is actually two purples in a rainbow, but I always just ignore one. It's kind of a lighter one and a darker one. If you want to add two purples. So that is our last one. And my, um, if you notice, because they are the scrap pieces, I did have to do something to mine to make them straight. These aren't bad, but if you see how this kink is in this green one, if you run these underwater and then just put them on a shelf so that it can hang straight down, these will straighten out. You can blow, the, blow dry them too, but they might fuzz up a bit more on you. So it just depends if you care if they do that or not. And there we go. A little pot of gold with the rainbow. And then if you want to see how I did this one, because it was my first attempt. Um, so I wanted my stripes to be from here to here. So I went one row um, below. I come up in the row I wanted in. Leave a little bit of a tail at the bottom. One over from where my first stripe was. And then I come back out where I started. And then I just tied that in there. And originally all these strings were going inside and out the back somewhere. But then I thought maybe this was kind of neat to look like it spilled over. So I just tied them and let them hang and then cut them to whatever length I wanted them cut to. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this or any of my other videos, please hit the subscribe button and click that bell. Not only does that help me out, but you will also be notified every time I load a new video. As well as any likes, shares, and comments are always appreciated. And like always, take care, be safe, and happy crocheting.